we now know how to compute a to the power e to the power a when a is either d or similar to d. This happens to be not difficult at all. But what if a is c or maybe similar to c? It should not be too hard. For e to the power d we only needed to compute powers of d. So since we are already able to compute powers of c, we should also be able to compute e to the power c. So are we able to do this? Let us look at this video. We are going to use the following stuff. i to the power n, the identity matrix, is just identity matrix, remains the same. No problems over there. If we compute j to the power 2m, we are going to use j to the power 2m, we have j squared to the power n. And since j squared equals minus i, j squared to the power n yields minus 1 to the power m times i to the power m, but that's just i as we saw already over here. So we are able to compute high powers of i and we are also able to compute high powers of j. So what are we going to do next? We express a C matrix as a linear combination of i and j. So what do we have? C equals a, a, b minus b as usual. We can split it into two parts, a times the identity matrix plus b times the j matrix. So, and now we have split a C matrix into those two parts. We are going to compute e to the power c. We write c equals a times i plus b times j. We split it into e to the power a times i plus e to times e to the power b times, b times j. And we know how to compute the first part. Because i is a diagonal matrix, so we have over here e to the power a diagonal matrix. And we already know how to compute e to the power diagonal matrix. That just yields e to the power a, 0, 0, e to the power a. The second term is a bit different, so let us use our definition. Sum n from 0 to infinity b times j to the power n over 2n factorial. That does not, does not look that nice. However, we can do a trick. We can split this second sum in even terms and odd terms. Which looks horrible at first. Here we have the even terms and here we have the odd terms. For, so we let m run from 0 to infinity and we have the two m's over there, which means we only have the even terms from the sum. We let l run from 0 to infinity and we have the two l plus 1's over there, which means that uh, this runs from 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. Here we have all the odd terms of the series over here. So e to the power c equals the first part, which is just e to the power a times the 2 by 2 identity matrix, no problems there, times even terms plus odd terms. Why do we want to split it like this? Well, if we split the sum like this, we can take the next step over here. We leave the exponent of a times i where it is. We leave the 2m factorial and the 2l plus 1 factorial, just leave them where they are. We split the b, j times 2 to the power m, and the same over here. We split them in b to the power 2m times j to the power 2m. And here we get a j to the power 2l plus 1. But j to the power 2l plus 1 equals j to the power 2l times j, so an additional factor of j. And then we recognize something. We have j to the power 2m, j to the power 2l, and we know how to handle these powers. Because j to the power 2m, or 2l, equals minus 1 to the power m times i. So then we are in the next step. So we get a minus 1 to the power m times identity matrix 
times another identity matrix still yields the identity matrix. And over here, the j to the power 2l yields uh, minus 1 to the power l. The b is just where, stays where it is. And the j goes to the front because j times i is just j. And now again, we recognize something. We leave the e to the power a here. But here we recognize the Taylor series of a normal cosine of the cosine of b. So we have a cosine of b times the identity matrix. And over here we recognize another Taylor series. Here we recognize the Taylor series of the sine of b. So we have here the sine of b times j. So I find plus j times the sine of b. And there we have e to the power c. The final formula is not hard at all. And moreover, it's very, sort of very easy <laughs> to remember because it's very similar to e to the power z, where z equals a plus bi, a complex number. So that's how you can memorize e to the power c.